Well, you can be, you only get one vote. And I don't care. I don't get any votes. Whoever is there, just please be patient with us. We'll get our act together quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny yeah, because I uh, sit there and go, boy, I'm like, glad it's not me doing it. Because <laughs> your, your picture has Joe's name and Joe's picture has Mary's name. It's funny. It's a, I, I think we all know that's happening. <laughs> oh, that is funny because I came into his... I'm, I'm using Chrome. I don't know how that happened. Well, you guys switched. You switched computers, right? Right now I'm at Joe's laptop. We right, may both be here. say his name in your picture because you're there. I'm using a different browser than we both thought I was, and that may be part of my problem. I get, uh, I get uh, yeah. We're going to both come in here. It'll be a lot easier. Give us one moment, please. This chair right here. Have the, here, you can have the comfy chair. Oh, no, I'd rather... Uh, You'd rather have the uncomfy chair. I don't even want the pictures. Oh, it looks like. Oh, there's an empty seat that's not here. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> we have one invisible member. <laughs> Yeah, same here. Yeah. I guess, I don't know, mine was okay, I guess. I had to teach a class of three to five on Zoom.
wonderful stuff happens in fall too. School starting yeah. and the whole nine yards. <laughs> Begin then. Do we have what introductions? Okay. Would, yeah. Why don't we just do go through? The, even though we've been full. Mary, all right. Mary and I are the uh, co-chairs. Mary and Silverberg. Joe Kolchinski and, and expert, experts on technology and COVID nineteen meetings. <laughs> Nicholas, how are you? Uh, I'm doing great. I almost didn't wasn't able to unmute myself. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Okay, Aaron. Aaron, I see you got the link. Is it Aaron on mute? She's muted. Yes, Aaron, Aaron you have to unmute yourself. Are you there, Aaron? Do something. We know you're there, Edward. Hi, Rebecca. Hello. Oh, someone just something happened here. Okay. Let me oh, Erin oh, joined with another with another um, way so she could listen and so she could talk. Oh. Oh, okay, Erin. Oh. Hello. Well, she'll talk when she wants to. <laughs> okay. Okay. And Suzanne's with us, and Rebecca's with us. All right, okay. so shall we proceed? Did anybody get a copy of the minutes? I, mean, I know you got the minutes from March 9th. Did anybody? Any comments, questions, criticisms? Joe, I just have one comment. Well, one correction. Under okay. number four, the only yep. thing you need to change is my first name. It I'm sorry. Suzanne. I know no, it's all right. Suzanne. I know it's Suzanne. I don't know. It's no Eric. worries. All right, we'll change that. Thank you. Anything mm -hmm. else? Anybody else? Any change? I'm sorry. Oh. I guess we're all okay then with the minutes. Was... Approved. The... How are you? Who is that? Who just? I can't Did somebody say something? Yeah. Uh, who, who made a motion to accept the minutes? We couldn't tell. I don't know if anybody did. I make a motion to accept the minutes. Somebody, somebody moved to accept the minutes. I moved oh, to accept the minutes. Rebecca's having trouble with her internet connection. She's back. I second. Can't hear her. Okay, great. Edward. Someone Edward. second. I heard Edward second it. Yes. Edward second it. So all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, great. So we accepted the minutes. Rebecca made the motion. Edward seconded. Okay. Suzanne. With I the Z have in a, a, <laughs> with a Z in it. Do you have, so a, do you have just, a report? I do. I just want to go over some of the accessibility projects in the parks and you know one or two of these I may have reported on in the past um, but I just think it's it's kind of good to see the town's commitment to improving accessibility in the parks so um, going back to just 2019 at Fernridge Park uh, public restrooms yeah. on the lower level of the pool house were renovated into two yes. unisex ADA compliant restrooms can you hear me I believe Yes, I believe I sent pictures to everybody. Did, Did I not? Get the, uh, everybody, it may not have been, sure. Yep. Yes, you did send it out. Thank you for doing yeah, that. Okay. Hopefully everyone got oh, it. You're welcome. But yes, we all see them. Okay. Now, I, had then, a, I had a question and I don't know. I don't I'm not familiar enough with ADA, but I have a question. Uh, are those uh, the, do the doors are the doors capable? Of, they have, they don't they're not automatically opening, obviously. Um, so we, we presume people can get them open. Is there some kind of rules about that? I'd have to look at the pictures a little. I haven't actually been on site to look at it, Joe, uh -huh. so I'm not sure. I don't have the pictures in front of me. I, I just don't know because, uh, yeah, I just, I get curious about things like that and I should. I, I should, will look uh, into that. 
I should, uh, it, you know, um, uh, mm -hmm. educate myself on those things. If the issue came up a long time ago at the senior center for whatever reasons. Uh, that, well, they were re renovating the, the the bathrooms for for ADA compliance. They were t changing the, uh, the the doors to make them bigger, yes. and they were insulating the bottom of the uh, the hot water pipes on the sinks. You know, which they were they were were accessible to wheelchairs, but people could get burned on the hot water. Uh, and they were doing all that, and I just raised the issue: is you know, some people are they going to be able to get the doors open? You know, right? I, don't know. I will look into that though, for you. Just curious. Uh, just curious. No, that's a good question. That's a good question to ask. So this year in 2020 at Westmore Park, a new ADA compliant outdoor classroom was completed over the summer. So that's really exciting. And then I had mentioned to you at the last meeting which is in the minutes about Eisenhower Park, how that, that we're replacing yes. the existing restroom with a new building. And that is still underway, but it is expected to be completed this year. So we're still hopeful that that will get completed. And then okay. uh, just kind of talking about what we're hoping to accomplish going forward uh, in the future over the next few years, we're hoping to renovate the entrance at Westmore Park's Hunter House, the ramp, so that would improve accessibility. Also at, um, at Westmore Park to replace the restroom there to create new ADA, a, a new, wait a minute, no, two new ADA compliant unisex restrooms, sorry. I okay. uh, wanna make sure I get that right. And then also renovating Kennedy Park Pool House to make that ADA compliant. So definitely there is a commitment on the town Bottom part way. To really want to make sure that the bathrooms are are yeah. renovated so that people are able to enjoy the facilities at the parks. What did you say before Eisenhower? I'm sorry, you kind of cut out, Joe. The the first thing you said before Eisenhower, uh, Westmore or something. I mentioned uh, Hunter the Hunter House, the ramp at Westmore Park, and then also at Walcott Park, their restroom and Kennedy Park Pool House, Walking those three. Park. And those so are things being... that we're proposing, you know, okay. to get done in the next few, you know, over the next year to three years. It takes time, yeah, yeah. you know, with us, but those are being considered at this okay. point as, as potential projects going forward. Okay, and that's all I have. Great. Okay, Fern Ridge is completed then, yeah. Yes, yep. Okay, thank you, Suzanne. Welcome. Okay, so. Oh, okay, yeah, well, this is old business, okay? Old business. What? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Helen Rubino Turco uh, asked that we. Um, uh, write a letter to uh, uh, recommending that uh, certain funds, what is this, CDBG, I, and I don't remember what, what that stand stands for. for again, Suzanne? It, it, it stands for Community Development Block Grant. Okay, she wanted us to write a letter um, of support, I suppose, really, um, to, so they, because they're requesting that uh, money be uh, spent for uh, Public facilities uh, accessibility uh, and uh, to to get a grant from these funds, and so we did that. I don't know if everyone was sent a copy of that or not. I believe, they were. I believe so, because that was a while ago. That was back in May, May twenty eighth, that uh, this was sent out. So that's that was just we want to know when you know that went out, and uh, so there. Now we <laughs> and then. Summer. Yeah, Greg Summer, who is the uh, assistant uh, uh, town engineer, uh, asked us to uh, to send a uh, the same kind of thing, send a similar kind of letter. But this was for, um, and I'm trying to get the words here. It's another kind of grant. But what was that? Oh, it's not. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, Community Connectivity Grant Program. 
and the uh, the engineer uh, the engineering division is uh, making requests for this. Uh, they're they're sending a uh, proposal, a grant proposal, to get funding to update um, uh, traffic signals and um, curb ramps uh, in uh, several locations around town. So he asked us for a similar kind of letter. And uh, no one's on television yet. But anyway, we did this. I we, we put together a letter for Greg. I don't know. I don't think we sent this out yet. We we just did this yesterday, I think. Did, I don't remember. Did we send you all a copy of this? Uh, yes, I believe last week we received the letter. Okay, you know, September 11th. I have this dated. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you all have a copy of the letter, and it just it just you know says uh, gives a reason why it's a good idea to upgrade these ramps, and Greg did respond with a thank you for the letter. So that's underway, and hopefully we'll see some improvements to some of the traffic signals and curb ramps. One, where would the mayor? You said they commented the one one particular location that was close to us here. Oh, um, oh, that's not good. Um, let me see. Uh, no, you know what I? That's I, all right. That's it. That's, that's. I know what you're remembering. We because after that, um, I had asked uh, Greg about the progress in the towns, you know, of where are they in the development of the continuing the Trout Brook Trail? Because they have come to our commission many times in the past um, with plans and asking for letters of support, again, when they were applying for the next round of funding to complete the trail. And I believe we've got, it's either three or four out of the seven parts are complete. Oh, and I know what Joe was asking about if, if i find it i'm going to blow yeah, it, it it's a particular intersection it's not not um, really critical for our discussion here today but it would be okay here's upgrading okay i found it i'm sorry joe we'll come back to trout brook but it was updating let's see trout brook at asylum trout brook at farmington avenue these are the, the audible signals and or curb ramps trout brook at boulevard South Main at Boulevard, South Main at Ellsworth, Park at Quaker Lane South, Boulevard at Quaker Lane South, and Farmington at oh Farmington at North South Quaker Lane. I will I will put all of those for your information uh, in the minutes. We'll just yeah, we'll uh, include, that. We'll include that in the minutes. That, that those are the intersections. Just so you're aware of. Where this work is uh, being planned. That's the plan. I don't think it's been funded yet. But. Yeah, I was just at the Trout Brook and um, Boulevard, and yeah, there's no there's no audible or flashing lights or anything, and so this pedestrian just kind of walked out um, right into traffic. So I'm glad they're fixing that one. Well, we did, I don't think I said as I said those are the proposed intersections. Oh. I don't. And they're requested. They wanted our. Uh, they wanted a letter of support from the from the commission uh, because they're 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 putting together their their funding request specifically for this grant. Yeah, and I think he said uh, it goes out in another week or two. Yeah, so so that's all in the works. It, it's not yeah. not there yet. Yeah, but I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad. I figured since we are all from all over town, I figured people probably notice them in different areas. And I, from what we know, they are very. So yeah, I agree with you, Rebecca. That's going to be a huge help. All right. Okay. And then regarding the topic, yeah, accidentally bought it. Um, mm -hmm. Not only. No, I I know, but since we're talking, okay. Right, don't, <laughs> don't waste don't waste time chastising. Oh, all right. Let's see. Um, all right. He let's see. He told us. Let's see. They want to. They want to. All right. Getting. All right. Wait a minute. 
Herbrook Trail phase number five, Farmington Avenue to Fern Street, phase six, Fern to Duffield in the spring of 2021. Phase three is still in design, but they are hopeful that they can construct that's as much as we have. We don't know anything else specific. Does anybody have any question or comment about that? Okay. Okay. So then moving on uh, to our friend. Uh, and I, I think Mary has more to say about accessible absentee ballots than I would have. Well, she'll be kinder. <laughs> Long story, because um, this this commission we have worked very hard over the years to um, to have this go the way it should, so that everybody can vote. We have two separate things going on. One is the major picture, where because of COVID, which made all of this other these other methods and challenges uh, necessary. Um, trying to make, uh, our registrars are trying to make um, the polling polling sites themselves accessible. I'm, I'm not talking about the ballot right now, but the, uh, but the polling sites, they're mm -hmm. doing their best, but there are obviously a lot of challenges and there are some real problems. Uh, I, and the other part of this, uh, another aspect of this is Many of us, and I will say disabilities organizations, private citizens, um, many of us have had some long-standing debates with the Secretary of State's office. Um, and the bottom line is, I, I, I will say this, people with a print disability, and that's generally people in my category, people who are blind or visually impaired, legally blind, or people with multiple disabilities who cannot handle a printed ballot. There are many classifications of, of disability that would make that challenge. Um, the, absentee, the absentee ballot as it is, is not accessible. It's not in an accessible format for people to, in that category to use. And I will just speak for myself. I did send my formal complaint letter out to all of you because I wanted you to understand what the problem is. Um, Let me interject. Yeah, oh, okay. Mary, Mary's written um, fully well over a dozen letters to a variety of individuals, legislators. She testified uh, uh, at the state legislation um, in regard to this absentee ballot, which everyone is entitled to under the, the governor's uh, ruling. Uh, because of COVID-19, to get some kind of ability for people with print disability uh, to vote. And nothing's been done. Um, and the Denise Merrill's only re response was to have people um, get someone help you vote, which by, you know, it's a constitutional violation. You're supposed to have a right to vote uh, independently and privately. Uh, and uh, there are other states that have developed systems and we were, we've been in, well, Mary's been in contact with my uh, IT assistants um, to, uh, to uh, write numerous letters, put various ideas in play, referring to other states and systems that have been used successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately think you know, with no positive results. And it looks like we don't have, we don't know, we don't know for sure, but it looks like uh, one of the, uh, one of the, uh, um, well, I don't know. There are several organizations right now, disabilities organizations that are. Let's just say it's on. Uh, we believe that there will be a, a situation where the state's going to be sued very soon um, because they're not complying with with this requirement. Other states have been sued, uh, and requirements have been met. It's not. We don't. We don't necessarily want to get into details on how the thing is resolved. Uh, it's not a complication. Uh, uh, our Secretary of State seems to be uh, sort of entrenched in some sort of uh, almost uh, ego, ego kind of uh, thing where, where suggestions from other states are not even acceptable. 
we so, laid out a clear path yeah. of what many other states are doing. And also, what our overseas ballot, when you've got people overseas yeah. and you can vote, there's a way to vote for that. Now, she has said publicly, I've heard her say this several times, she is opposed to electronic voting. And we say to her, no, it is not electronic voting. Yeah. It is marking the ballot electronically, but then printing it out and mailing it in or putting it in the drop box like any other ballot. It is not electronic voting. And I have heard her say publicly that the Russians will hack us. It is not safe. We can't do electronic voting. And we have said, no, that's not what it is. No one's suggesting that that's what we've done. At, yeah. at any rate, the, we, we've, we've uh, you know, come to brick walls on this, uh, this whole effort. Um, mm -hmm. And we will, you know, whatever happens and what, you know, it's out of our hands now into with, you know, with other organizations, uh, I'm pretty sure lawsuits will be filed uh, imminently. Right now, discussions, surprised. right now we're aware of discussions between certain attorneys and, well, attempted discussions between certain attorneys and Denise Merrill. But we'll see. We don't know. We'll appraise you of any developments uh, that might occur. Right now, no, if you are print disabled, your only options are to get somebody to vote for you, essentially, or help you vote, mm -hmm. vote or show up personally and you know the reason we're not supposed to reason we should have a uh, we're entitled to absentee balance absentee balance is to not put yourself at risk for covid and so we will be putting ourselves at risk for covid vote because we feel it's voting is very important and i would urge not not only the, the our members of our commission but any friends relatives anybody with or without a disability if you if it is a very personal decision to, to go whether whether to vote with assistance and not be part of it or to risk your health if you feel you know if you feel that is a, a major factor for you that's that, that's i say it's a very personal decision this time about how you're going to vote but i would say vote if you have to go in person use the touch screen or the phone I must tell you, as a private citizen, I was very offended and really put out while I was waiting my turn to testify before the Government Administration and Elections Committee. I heard Denise Merrill say to everyone that, well, when someone else from one of the other agencies said, well, what about blind people? Or how, what about people? How are they going to vote? Uh, because we had, but that was part of the discussion. Well, but then when it was my turn, um, I, I had to comment because what she said was, well, maybe we can just bring the touch screen out to the curb and let them vote that way. And I, I was very offended. And I just said, somehow that will not work for a blind person. Now, will it? There is no thought to people with disabilities and our right to vote. To me, it is a very sacred right that we have. And whether you're blind or you're in a wheelchair, I don't, whatever your problem is, you got the right to vote. And I feel that right now we are being denied that right. And that is illegal, folks. It is wrong, it is illegal. And our Secretary of State does not care. Now that piece is my, my opinion, because if she honestly cared, this would have been changed. Um, and, you know, as Joe said, you know, I, state by state, we're watching. And this will be resolved. One way or another, it will be resolved. It that's gonna, all we can. Apparently, it's not going to be nice. It so, can't be. But I just want on. you to be aware of where where we are in that situation. Just and everybody. I do. Okay, I so the next, next yeah. item on old business, I guess, is uh, uh, voting. And you're all aware of uh uh, Mary's uh, complaint letter. You should be anyway. I think, believe we sent it out to everyone. Um, that at least at one one voting site, some may have been very very well prepared. Uh, where we vote here, it, they weren't well prepared at all. Again. And I'm curious. Did anybody else try to? You know, I don't know. Yeah. Did anybody else use the IVS voting system or um, have any? A really positive or negative experience at the polls at the primary. No. No. Okay. 
in November, I'm going to use the the uh, that system just just to irritate people, actually. But see how um, see how well it works. So I, I didn't this this last election. I didn't uh, for the primaries. I didn't go to the polling place. But the two previous times I've gone over to Connard, and um, and they've been pretty pretty. Um, I've done the little. The, I've done the iPad version, and they've done, they've mm -hmm. they've been pretty good. Uh, no, actually, I did the phone one the last time I was there, and it took an extremely long period of time, and it was really hard to get through all of the candidates because they were saying all these names, and um, it was just so much information to try to process. If I wasn't taking notes, um, mm -hmm. it was hard to keep it all straight in my head. It really was. What was the staff? competent yeah the two times ago the lady wanted to see how it worked so she was looking over my shoulder until i said well i <laughs> until i told her that it, you know i thought that that was inappropriate but um yeah. but they were they they had all their codes everything was plugged in okay, yeah. they did have to read off of a sheet so they did have to follow instructions from a sheet but i apparently i was the only person both of those days that went to the to that voting area. A wide variety of disabilities, and for whatever the reason, they don't all go to vote. And I think, upon reflection, um, sometimes we're beaten down so hard when you go to the polls. If you're made to feel like you don't belong there. This isn't a place for you. We can't accommodate you. Or, oh, we have to set this up for you. The time you get done, it's very easy to get discharged. So, well, I'm not going to bother going. If there's an accessible ballot, yes, you can ask for a free ballot, but you got to stay home and go privately. But when people go to the polls to try to vote, struggle and staff doesn't isn't sure about what to do it is very easy but he puts you off very easy so i'm not going to go through that again now in all fairness for a registrar the last several years after many years of working hard to get this right the last several years they got it right it was a pleasure to go in and vote it, was, it ran the way it was meant to work but one of the things that I became aware of from talking with other people who are doing advocacy work in the same way we are, I said, you know, we've got a lot of new, younger, because let's face it, most of the moderators are in my age group, uh, and they're not the ones who are being the moderators this year. So they've got a lot of younger people, newer people, who are having a clue. They don't and yes, they're being trained, but uh, from what I'm hearing from other registrars and other town clerks, and from people from other states as well, because there are so many new people uh, with so many changes, they've had a hard time. Even though they've been trained, they still don't know what they're doing, and they're not comfortable with it, and they don't know. There's, there's, a, there's a gap there. So that piece of it, I understand. One more issue uh, at, at the particular polling place we went was the the uh, the area where the um, accessible voting uh, machine equipment was located was virtually impossible to get to in a wheelchair. Oh, it was impossible to get to in a wheelchair, and it would have been very anyone that had any kind of mobile uh, mobility restrictions would have had a great deal of problems getting into that location. Um, but I also would happily report that action is being taken for training. Um, yes. Mary was asked to actually possibly be involved in the training uh, for, you know, West Hartford. This is just, of course, it's all West Hartford, but, you know, for to, to see if we can improve these things. So I think that's very positive, though, that, you know, with there's the complaint and the problems, but, but yeah. action is being taken. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. Unless anybody has a comment yeah. or a question. Any voting, we're done with that.
Hello. Hello. Who is it? No, no, I, I don't know. No, maybe that was no. just the dog or something. Okay. Anyway, uh, I don't know what we're, what's going on, Mary. You put us to the agenda. Uh, new business, possible updating of uh, West Hartford Police Department training manual for deaf and hearing impaired. Now that was something that Andrew, Andrew was going to report on. He wrote oh. Unfortunately, since Andrew couldn't be here tonight, I'd like to table that one. Yeah. Okay with everybody. He's here. Anybody have a comment? Okay, so we're good then. Okay. All right. I guess we should move that that be tabled. Somebody should move that we bring that up next month. Yes. I would say to move to bring it up uh, next month, Joe. Thank you. Somebody second that. I'll second it. Rebecca Thank seconds. You. Thank you. And uh, then all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And um, I don't have anything to say about the blue envelope for communication with people with autism. I know it was a long time ago that we discussed that. But people, I don't remember who, but I know there were one or two of you who had some question about that. And we talked about getting that from the police department and discussing it. Does anybody have any comment about that tonight or no? We were never able to get a blue envelope. I tried. Oh, you were going to get one from. I tried. A I tried. We didn't have any. Hmm. So we'll, we'll, we'll try again because we, we this fell through the cracks with us too. Yeah. Does anybody have a. No. We'll look into it. We'll look into it. All right, and follow up with dementia friends. We were, I, I'm not sure what we were gonna do with that. We thought possibly all of us uh, actually registering as dementia friends and we were gonna get, is there some training involved, I believe? So Joe, this is Suzanne. So at the, I think it was the, it might've been the January meeting. I had, Rebecca might have brought, yes, but I, Rebecca yeah, brought I, this up at, at one point and then I, I said so. I would look at, Okay, I would look into it, which I, if, just as a recap, I had reached out several times, as did um, someone on my staff, to Shazia to try to get some more information about their program. And then um, at the Mar so by the March meeting, that's what I had reported, that I had not heard back from her. All right. And then following the, the March meeting, um, eventually we did connect, but COVID had started. Yes. And so that was really the focus. And I left her another message. I don't know if it was a week and a half ago or so, just to kind of see what the situation is and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, and I haven't heard back from her. Okay. I, um, so also, in addition to that, just so that you know, I did have an opportunity over the last number, several months, to talk to the directors at both senior centers. So okay. Kathleen Ferroni has since retired, but I did talk to her. She had gone through, I think, the training, or she had someone come to the center and talk to people about it. Uh, it didn't seem to oh, go no, anywhere. Oh, we no, I think we were there. I think Mary oh, and I were you? there. She, they came to a, uh, they came to a uh, uh, what are you, old folks uh, commission, oh, senior commission, senior <laughs> Senior Commission meeting. Oh, okay. Senior right. Advisory okay. Commission so meeting. A, so was it just a few minute? Pres was it a few minutes, or was it a more a, elaborate presentation when they came? She, it was she like, went through a training, so I don't well, know if, was, if. No, 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 no. This wasn't a training. No, you're, 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 okay. there was something oh, else then. More to this, this was. This was. They came to, yeah. No, they came to. They came to our ITN meeting. Yes. But we had. So, you see, oh, you see, you know what? Because we heard so many. So many feet, yeah, so many because times. They came right. to, what right. you're thinking of? They came with they addressed West Hartford Rotary. I wasn't. And they also came to our commission. They came to our commission. That was it. Yeah, it was the same people who came to the senior advisory. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So, okay. and then I, no, no, I did speak Sorry. with Gina Marino, who is uh, 
the, the director over at um, the West Hartford Senior Center yeah. well, recently, and she did say that they came last October, I think, and did a program, and they get it, did it for their members. Uh, it did not sound like they anything came of it. I don't yeah. know if there was just not enough interest, but... Um, you know, at one point I thought, well, maybe this would be a good volunteer opportunity, like we could do it through volunteer services. I don't know. I feel like I've reached out quite a bit. And yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. a lot of our focus is on basic necessities. We've had to, with COVID, we've really had to focus on what the most pressing mm -hmm. priorities are. That doesn't mean that there isn't a place for this, but I don't Everything, know what everybody thinks. I don't want to, you know, minimize no, I the think value I, of this. No, I think, though, that like so many other things, this is uh, uh, some sort there's some sort of delay is going to be involved because yeah. of COVID-19. And every everybody, every area, every walk of life, every business is in some kind of situation that they're adjusting and catching up and postponing right. and planning. so so and you have to pay attention to the priorities and and I can appreciate in your uh, you know your uh, activity that uh, just necessities are you know number one thing folk people are still focused on getting getting food and and things like that yeah mm. okay it's something we so can we'll certainly revisit. I don't know how you feel about this Rebecca because I know you brought this up I don't I don't know how you feel no, about it. No, no, I don't even phone. know. It, 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 oh, sorry. It, it's based on um, a volunteer coming in to teach the class, and I thought we were going to try to join with another portion or another organization to bring in more people. Yeah, it doesn't seem to like be the appropriate environment for it right now, for sure. Okay. Yeah, and, okay. and, I, and again, those kinds of things are wonderful, but I don't know if they're the commission's uh, mission. Yeah, <laughs> you know we're, we we bring people together sometimes, and and we uh, we're certainly making uh, reports to people and advising. It seems like all we're doing recently is advising about voting, voting, and hammering the table about voting. But nevertheless, uh, uh, yeah, we're not necessarily. In, yeah, that's enough said. I talk too much. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have anything else? <laughs> Anybody have anything else to bring up? Oh, yeah. any observations or concerns about problems that you see that the people with disabilities are having in town? Or any possible ways that, you know... Uh, I think this COVID-19 business has been just overpowering everything else and, and putting a, a, a color mm -hmm. to to everything that we deal with and just making everything else so much more difficult. I would agree. Yeah, me too. Well, and the depression levels, I think that a lot of the people with disabilities, they can't get out as much. And so their depression levels are shooting way up. Um, and the resources, it's harder for them to get the help they need at the doctor because a lot of stuff has switched online or it's taking longer. Um, mm -hmm. I know in my community, I'm particularly concerned about um, the lack of visitation at a lot of mm -hmm. the assisted livings and skilled nursing facilities. I've seen a, a, a dramatic decline in a lot of my patient, uh, clients, especially people with dementia. That uh, loss of, of connection is pronounced. Yeah, we we pick up a uh, uh, a person who's uh, who's a family member whose spouse is is in a, a facility for dementia, and and uh, she's I guess fortunate or whatever has <laughs> been able to get a little part time position there uh, and be his you know caregiver uh, for for. Uh, uh, a period of time and uh, I think three days a week but whatever but uh, we when I picked her up one day I well Mary and I were, were both there and she was pointing to this window and it was just a regular window <laughs> it's a regular window in one of the rooms and it's like that's where people have to come to visit through this yeah. window yeah. you know no touch no personal thing uh, and and I that's going to be hard for someone who, who I was gonna say who thinks clearly like me but that's 
another that's another problem. But uh, You're thinking clearly. <laughs> no, I think clearly. <laughs> but this, that's got to be extra rough on someone with dementia mm -hmm. who perhaps depends on that contact. Well, in your structure, in your routines, in your day, in the social cues, and other the contact with other people, it's when it's not there. It's like how when you can't connect, you lose so much. And I think um, we see that with some of the, the special ed kids who are home, the routines, the structure, the learning patterns. So much of it, it's totally interrupted, and it's a to keep people connected and wanting to learn and wanting to yeah. be up, that's hard. I, I don't know. I see huge declines here too. There's a part of that. We notice it's never the same after what equipment you have at home. You don't work out the same as you do. And the very population, you know, we tell older people like our age, mm. Joe's and mine. Work out, move, stay strong. And now it's like, oh, you have to have extra initiative and have it already be a really life routine. Otherwise, if people end up falling by the wayside. And that ultimately does more damage to you. A lot of these things, a friend, of, another friend of mine who's in an assisted living, one of our very nice ones here in town, she said, Mary, I'm like a prisoner. Yeah. She said, People can't come in here to visit us, and we are very limited where we're allowed to go. Mm. And she never, never figured on that. There's a lot of things none of us have ever figured on. I know, but that that makes me think about what you do and the population you see, Rebecca. Okay. Does anybody have anything yeah. else? Any comments? Well, this will be a short meeting tonight, then, mm. if nobody has anything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do have one question for the group, too, if there is anything, since our next meeting will be November 9th, right after the election, if there is anything that you would like to address, or if you have any concerns, offline, you know, afterwards, send, send an email, because uh, if there's any, you know, if there's anything that we do need to discuss, or anything that we could, you know, tweak a little, uh, for the better. Hey, that's what we're here for. The town asks for our advice. And if we have it, we're happy to give it. So if you do have anything on your mind, let us know. Okay. All right. So we'll call a adjourn the meeting. We'll adjourn the meeting at, at 7 All right. Everybody, thank you so much and for what you all do. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Thanks Mary. Everybody. Have a nice day. Sweet enough to worry about the TV audience. Bye.